WNNX Atlanta is everything alternative 99X. A Cumulus Station. Getting you tickets to see the police before you can buy them. Every hour today, qualify to win a pair of tickets to see the police at Phillips Arena November 17th. The new Morning X draws a winner tomorrow morning at 8. The police. Everything alternative 99X. Leslie, Fram, would you like to introduce me to your friend? <laughs> Jenner's, I it's, say that. It's always that way, isn't it? Yeah, you know, he walks in the room. I'll, I'll introduce you in a second. Oh, he walks in the room. I go, hey, I'm Sean Demery. Yeah, he's very friendly. <laughs> I go, that's Jenner's over there. You. He goes, Leslie! There's hugs. <laughs> there's always... Because from the beginning of time, uh, since he's been coming to Atlanta, we've had him to 99X. We've had him at various shows. And uh, guitar rock legend, Tom Morello. Yay! Hello. Here I am. Go I don't know how legendary I'm feeling at this hour of the morning, but uh, it's yeah. nice to be here all the same. Cool. Your voice sounds nice and deep this morning. Well, <laughs> my voice sounds nice and deep all the time. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you, you've spent a lot of time in Atlanta. Now, Jenner's uh, just moved here last year when oh, I was yeah. explaining to him that you've recorded a lot of records here with Brendan O'Brien from, you know, Rage to Audio Slave to your new stuff, so... We want to find out a little bit about, you know, places you like to My hang Atlanta out history. in I actually, Atlanta. I actually lived here um, for about five months in 1995 when we were making the Evil Empire record in Virginia Highlands. Enjoyed myself. Mm -hmm. Enjoyed the pizza at Little Five Points very much. Very uh, nice. I'm not, I'm not, the, some of the haunts may not be here, but we had a really great time living here. Great restaurants, nice folks, very accommodating Yeah, people. Sean, that's Sean's neck of the woods, Virginia Highlands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. love it down there. I saw you at. Uh, we were Master kind of the Beverly Hillbillies, though, of the neighborhood, you know, because we we were like we were like you know we rented this. It was the four men of Rage Against the Machine living in this house, and we had like the refrigerator out on the front lawn. You know? Very and nice. Brendan O'Brien, who was making the record, he uh he he got tired of us coming over to his house to watch it's like sports on TV, so he bought us a TV just so we would just stay in our house. And we had, like, like, the, like the box of the TV was out front. We were nice. We weren't good neighbors. Oh, I love it. We weren't good. I saw neighbors. you once at Masquerade Music Park uh, in the back and. It was like 4,000, maybe 4,500 people oh, yeah. there. And I know a lot of your shows are like this. Cause I've, seen, I've been lucky to see Rage several times. But, you know, just there's just something weird. You guys were late to the stage, and people started throwing shoes and bottles and anything. It was like a war. It was like a rack, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <Stuff> <laughs> and then you guys got on, and people started pogoing or whatever they're doing. It's like a sea of heads. Yeah. It gives me goosebumps just to say it. It was amazing to see. Yeah. A lot of your shows the are The children like enjoy rocking. Yeah. yeah. So the, <laughs> <laughs> I was just talking. We were actually out, just off there. We were talking about this. That, that on this, doing this Night Watchman tour that I'm on now, uh, and I played some shows with Ben Harper and, and Dave Matthews Band at Bonnaroo. And the audience is a very different one from, say, the Rage or even the Audio Slave audience. It's my first acquaintance with hippies and how they behave, and they're very nice people. I never knew that. It's a great vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a, it's a, they're happy to be there and they enjoy music. There, there are not so many bottles and shoes, <laughs> right, and yeah. rack like yeah. problems I during was the show. It. You just got to it. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're just kind of chilling out. It's less was we were listening to the uh, a lot of the Night Watchman stuff yesterday. Yeah. Uh, we were listening to the album, and uh, it's cool. It's got such a different uh, kind of sound to it than what you know. Of course, obviously being associated with Rage and Audio Slave and that stuff. Can you tell us a little bit about where that sound comes from? What inspires you to do this kind of record? Sure. Um, well, I started writing these songs about four and a half years ago, and it was basically an, an antidote to my arena rock. You mm -hmm. know, I was coming off these Audio Slave tours, which we had a lot of fun doing, and I also have like this non-profit political organization, but I, I, there w I wasn't involved in music that was expressing my worldview. So I've always been a fan of heavy music and of rebel music. And it o dawned on me in the last few years that music does not require Marshall Stacks to be heavy. That like, you know, Johnny Cash is a very heavy artist. Mm -hmm. Bruce Springsteen's yeah. Nebraska record. Um, um, early Bob Dylan, uh, Woody Guthrie. And, the, and, and I'm a huge fan of that genre of music. I just started writing some of those songs and playing literally these coffee houses in front of eight people in a latte machine. You know, it would be, be one night in the, in the, you know, the 12,000 seat arena and then the next night in the coffee house rocking these songs. But even at a, at a very early time, um, that's where the name The Night Watchman came from because I wanted to sign up anonymously. I didn't want you know, like, if I sign up as Tom Morello, dude, right. people are like, dude, bulls on parade. So you're bro. showing up, like, anonymously to these little I'm not, clubs. I'm, I'm standing in line, signing up at country and western bars, you know, to <laughs> sing my three songs. Wow. And then they announce, and next up, the Night Watchman. And for the most part, nobody knows that it's the dude who just rocked yeah. their ass off at the arena. Yeah. And I've, I've played hundreds of, I actually just got back from... Um, from Germany playing the G8 protests there, right? Mm -hmm. And playing in the midst of, 
you know, water cannons and tear gas and playing in front of 50,000 people who are battling with police as the show is going on. And I'm thinking, well, this is what I should be doing with my yeah. life. <laughs> it's like a good day at the office. For me, Tom you know? Morello in studio. And you have been tear gassed in the past. Yeah, what if, is that like? Honestly, if, if I play a show and I'm not tear gassed, it seems like maybe I haven't done my job. <laughs> it's like a letdown almost. <laughs> Seriously, like, what yeah. Happened? Yeah, I, I expect before this morning is over, there'll be a tear gas attack here. At now, the, when you, uh, you, you've been arrested before, and when you get arrested, like, uh, who's the first person you call? Your wife or... Actually, Your attorney. Actually, no, actually, it's, it's funny because the la- the time I was most... Re- I'm currently on... There'll be no arrest tonight, so don't get any, any excited. I'm currently on probation right now, so I can't get arrested for another six months. Um, but the last time I was arrested was uh, doing civil disobedience with hotel workers in Los Angeles. And, you know, and, and I, I literally made my first... I had to choose, like, who was going to make my phone call to. And I thought, well, you know, I could let mom know I'm okay. You know, I could let my girlfriend know that, you know, everything's working out all right. Mm-hmm. Or I could advance the cause by calling the morning... K-Rock morning show and going, this is time. Tom Morello calling from jail, and the hotel workers are being screwed over. Hey, which, one, and which one did you choose? I chose the. I called K. Yeah, yeah, I of figured. Of course, get sure. the message out. And, but they didn't. They weren't expecting it. There's like, will you accept a collect call from Tom Morello from prison? <laughs> <laughs> and how would you like to be the call screener that gets yeah. that one? Like, who's calling? What happened yeah, now? What happened? Yeah. Did you notice how casually he said that? Well, the last time I was arrested. Uh, <laughs> well, what? How many, t- how many times have you have you uh, have you been arrested? If you don't mind me asking. Uh, yeah, I don't mind. Um, doing kind of doing like civil disobedience yeah. stuff three or four times, and then a time or two outside only, of that. <laughs> stuff we can't really yeah talk about. yeah like, I, 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 not over an open line yeah. how, how was that show at coachella obviously the big reunion yeah. show oh, and yeah. that was the one that people were going bananas for. Yeah. It was a huge we gave buzz. away a bunch of trips to that yeah. we gave away some coachella trips around the radio station but people were just like clamoring to get a taste of rage against the machine again yeah. it, was, I mean, it, was quite, it was quite a weekend like i played i did a night watchman show on saturday and then the rage show was on sunday mm-hmm. and you know, I've been playing music for some time, and to have, like, I think we, you know, my first record deal was a band before Rage Against the Machine, so that might have been 1989. And, you know, to have it be that many years into playing music and have the most exciting weekend of my musical career occur that deep in it was pretty exciting. It was so really the Rage Show was, the, my show went great, the Rage Show was awesome, it was a really fun weekend. Yeah. What has Zach been doing all these years? I, he's been, you know, he's been do, playing music and chilling, and, and, and he just was getting ready to kick ass at Coachella, frankly. <laughs> it was awesome. Well, well those things, I like, go on MySpace for, for years. Like, every month, I go on, it's like, I wonder what Zach's doing. Mm-hmm. It's like, there was that protest song that a few radio stations mm-hmm. played. But, you know, a lot of us, you know, we're trying to get yeah. a little taste of rage again. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's great that you guys are back yeah, together. Yeah, it was fun. Who made the call on that? Was that something that uh, just one day you guys thought, well, let's just try this? Well, no, it was it was in part because it, at that point, we weren't going to be doing any audio slave training. Right. That much was clear. And, you know, for me, it was just, it, it was a time where I just, wanted to reorganize my priorities you know and i wanted to just be involved in music that kind of expressed how i look at the world and that left me open to playing rage against the machine songs and that made me you know then i got a call from brandon who said let's make a night watchman record so that's when that's all cool. that began you talked a little bit about you you knew at that point you weren't touring with audio slave yeah. was i mean what were the conditions of, of how that kind of came apart it was kind of weird well yeah i mean it's, it's it's not too complicated there's a dvd that you can rent it's called spinal tap and you put that in <laughs> and you press pause somewhere yeah. along the way and if you're in a band from a garage band to a stadium band yeah. the, the, uh, that's what happens that is <laughs> that's that movie's not fiction it's real and that's you know it's i've been in many bands and like you can either at a certain point get over the hump of whatever you know drama or goofiness is going on sure. or not and audio slave was unable to get over that hump. yeah there's um we had, we had i just wanted to play something real fast for you there was a clip of uh, chris in a recent interview talking about how it seemed like the music of the band got boring i don't know you see what you make of this when you have four guys writing songs in a room all at the same time things can start sounding the same and for someone like me i'm used to writing songs alone i can do that too and then i can kind of go off and do whatever i want it's just kind of chris's take on on what happened with the whole thing i I mean that's um that was never we never talked but none of us when we were in the band seemed to have any musical problems i think the i think that you know um you know, Chris has earned the right to to play to to write whatever music he wants and play. Sure. And he wasn't. And the dudes, you know, the three quarters of Rage Against the Machine are never going to be comfortable being a backup band or you know or sure. anything like that. I mean, right. you know, and so, you know, we made our living for ten years singing a song that said "F you, I won't do what you tell me." So, like, <laughs> if we reach a certain impasse, it's like I don't know what we're going to do. Bro, you know? like, like, I can't help you beyond a certain point. <laughs> and if you haven't heard the philosophy, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? So. Um, no, but it's, but it's, I, I love the time we had an audio save. We made great records, and I love 
playing with Chris, and it was really fun music to play and enjoy the time tremendously. And the fact that it came to an end, while that is sad, it opened the door for Rage to have a reunion and for me to do this Night Watchman stuff, which has been my, you know, I've been having more fun doing this than I've had making music in a very long time. 